Hey everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. Hope everybody is having a great day. Look, I'm not gonna be long. I'm on my way to meet Mary and we've got something we're doing. Uh, and I'm taking a break in the day to get that done. But on the way to uh, pick her up, I wanted to stop and talk to you guys, man. I've been sharing a lot of stuff. I got a lot more content coming. There's so much that's going on on multiple levels in the black community. You heard me talk about epigenetics and psychology, epigenetics in the predisposition of trauma. You've heard me talk about uh, the miseducation of black youth. Uh, you've heard me talk about the emasculation of the black male uh, and the feminization of the black male image, and that's a major push. But something that's really important to me that you've heard me talk about a lot, it's the restoration of the black family nucleus. And there's very little that is in the black community that's under, under assault at the intensity, level, frequency, and force uh, as the black family. It's done in a lot of subliminal ways. It's done uh, in a lot of uh, covert ways. But the whole purpose is to marginalize the black, black family because in marginalizing the black family, we minimize the force of black unity in the home in the community and what i mean by that when you talk about black black men and black women you're talking about the merging of uh feminine energy with masculine energy creating a strong synergistic force that can accomplish unbelievable things but when you disrupt that when you create division when you create a situation where we spend more times fighting with one another pointing fingers and and, and placing blame than we do about healing and building and creating an environment for our youth to come up in and be fully uh, educated and having the principles and values that are capable of creating a strong black nation inculcated into their psyches at an early age. That's what happens in the black family. When the black family is functional, when the black family is functional, uh, you're able to rear up children that understand the importance of black group economics. You rear up children that understand the importance of black unity, that understand the importance of holistic preparation in order to go out and compete, that understand the importance of their own self-identity versus trying to uh, com uh, fit into what someone else has uh, designated for them as far as identity finding their own place in the world, finding their own force, becoming a force. All of that is done at a very early age. That's what's not happening when you have division, when you have women fighting, black black women fighting with black men, black men assaulting black women, this whole idea of uh, placing blame on the other. There's enough culpability to go around. There's enough fault to go around. Black men, we got a bunch of stuff we got to fix. Black women, we've got to stop seeing the black man as the enemy and understand that the, the the worst of the worst is not the representation of the whole. We only get to see black men at their worst. It's projected in media, it's projected in music, it's projected in the news, it's projected all around you. So you take the, the experience that you had with a black man, which could probably bad, and then you take everything's been fed to you, you start to think that's every black man, it's not. Some of us are out here busting our ass to be the best we can, not only for our families, but for our communities. Black men, stop uh, bulking uh, black women up in a hole. Every woman is not toxic. Every woman is not walking around with unsolved and unresolved issues. Yes, and one thing we need to know because we possess something very powerful in ourselves is that we have the ability to love women back to life. I've said this over and over again. We have the ability to love women back to life. And I'm not just talking about mates. I'm talking about loving on our sisters, uh, regardless of their relationship to us. You don't have to know her to love on her. Open the door for her when you see her at the mall, when you see her at the store, when you see her at the restaurant. Uh, speak kindly to her. Guard the way you talk about our women in public. That's not where we need to discuss our feelings, our, our assessments of our women. We need to guard our women. We need to protect our women. As Malcolm X said, uh, years ago, the black woman is the most unprotected, uncovered uh, woman on the planet. Don't get me wrong. Black men are the most targeted. I get it. 
I'm not sitting up putting blame on one group. What I'm saying is we've been trained to look at each other as enemies. We've been trained to go for the juggler. We've been trained, we've been trained to make it a fight against the very one we need to be partnering with. That's not an accident. Have you been hurt? More than likely. I know I've had my share of poor and bad and hurting relationships with women. But in order to love my wife, I had to let that go. I had to sit up and understand that everybody's like that. I had to sit up and understand that I also had some culpability in that. How? Because I'm the common denominator. I tell my clients when they come to me and they're talking about this guy did this and this guy did that and this woman did this and this and they, they, they're four or five relationship deep and they're still talking about the problems they have and I'm like okay you do realize that the only common denominator in all these relationships is you when are you going to take some accountability for, for that if nothing more you were not in a position to truly use your discernment to choose someone that was good for you so in that sense you still have some culpability in it and, and also normally when you go in something you ain't healed you have problems trusting, so your behavior is is untrusting, and, and that creates things. You're, you're ready to blame somebody and point the finger and, 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 and make alleged, uh, uh, alleged different things, and that leads to things. All of this stuff we got to work on. We got to work on our mental health. We got to work on uh, our mental strength, our ability to sustain our our spiritual strength. But we've got to be aware and wise enough to see when someone's stirring the pot and we're biting on the bait. I'm not saying we ignore the things that are wrong. I'm saying that we need to get together as a whole and work on it. No, it's not gonna be easy. I always get people talking about, it's too late for this, man. Do you see where we're at? The bottom line is I'm not built as a quitter. I've never been built as a quitter. I've gone up against some unbelievable odds and come out on top. It wasn't because I had the best odds. It wasn't because I knew the right people. It wasn't because I made all the right. It was simply because I made up in my mind it was going to be done and what nothing anybody else was going to do about it. We're going to have to get that type of, uh, of commitment inside of ourselves about ourselves and about our people. We're going to have to stop acquiescing and, and being compliant and complacent with white supremacy racism as if we don't have a force within ourselves to do something about it. But we've got to stop sitting up and turning on one another. That's their, that's their trump card is infighting. If we can get them aimed at each other, they can't be aimed at us. If we can get them blaming one another, they'll never truly blame us. They'll talk about it. They'll talk about discrimination. They'll talk about uh, inequity and lack of opportunity. They'll talk about miseducation. They'll talk about uh, mass incarceration. They'll, they'll talk about gentrification. Oh, they'll talk about all of that, but at the end of the day, they'll be fighting one another. They won't realize that all these things have created hardships and difficulties that lead to some of the things they're frustrated about. They'll just turn on one another. That has to stop. We need to be honest with one another. We need to let us let, let one another know how we feel about what's going on and how we're being treated. But we also got to understand that we are dealing with someone else who is actually... No person does harm without having been harmed. You know, every every blue moon, a psychopath is born. You know, a psychopath doesn't have the sense of morality, the sense of empathy, the 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 ability to feel and and, and and care about what's right. They only do what suits them, and they have no qualms about it because they have no feelings. That's a rarity. Psychopaths are born. We're not talking about psychopathic behavior in that sense. We're talking about a developed psychopathy that comes from trauma on top of trauma with something known as complex trauma that we haven't dealt with and now it's turned us on each other and we're still fighting a war but we're beating at the air because we don't have our cross airs aimed at the right target that has to stop it has to stop look I'm about to get here and pick up Marion but I just wanted to uh, talk to you about that uh, look don't forget to support the work we're doing. We got a lot of things coming this summer. Uh, we got a lot of situations. As a matter of fact, I got a family right now that me and my uh, uh, colleagues are working to help. That's like major, major. Uh, and I'm thinking about how I'm going to bring it to you guys. But I really could use some help right now. Show some love. On that note, I'm out.